What is the difference between a national master and an international master in chess? You've got grandmaster at the very top, the best of the best, but right below that is international master. Then you have fide master, then you have candidate master, and then you have national master, which is what I am. Well, today you're gonna get to see exactly what the difference between national master and international master is, because my opponent is Zurab, an international master who's gonna be recording and talking through his thought process at the exact same time that I am. We're gonna edit back and forth between my thoughts and his thoughts, my thoughts and his thoughts, so you can see exactly what the difference is. Let's just jump right in. I'll start with E4. Now, I do play few openings, mainly D4, Knight F3 and E4. No, he plays E4, okay, this is new. I was expecting like D4, or Knight F3. I'm gonna go with the Scandinavian and see if we can get some knight f6 happening here. Maybe he hasn't studied these lines. I don't know. We're going to find out here if he takes. Nelson decides to respond my e4 with d5 Scandinavian defense. I was not ready for this. And this is not my strong suit opening. So let's see what we want to do with it. Most people are going to take this. I guess you could push by, but that's pretty rare and I don't think it's as good. So I'm expecting that he's gonna take this. He does accept. Okay, let me go Knight of Six. And I'm gonna try to play quickly here and save as much time as I can for later. A lot of times we get some really complicated positions from these lines and so I wanna have as much time as possible. Also, I'm decently familiar with this but we'll see what, which line he decides to go for. He takes D5, wow, Knight goes to F6, not capturing back on D5. Now, I know that going c4 and trying to hold onto this pawn may not be the best idea because i think black can go c6 there and get enough counterplay if d takes c6 knight takes c6 i believe so simply going to take over the center with d4 and have him capture on d5 most people play d4 and i'll go for the uh portuguese there's also the c4, and I'll play the Icelandic Gambit, which I don't actually play often because a lot of people avoid that, but very tricky lines, so we'll see if we see that. And then you could also just develop your one of the knights or something. He does go for d4, and I'm going to go bishop g4. So the point here is we want to kind of induce f3 and then retreat, basically, and we've taken away the square from the knight. So that's why we might go there to lose a tempo. They could also play bishop e2, which is okay, but f3 I think is the main line. And so we'll see if he's familiar with this. All right, bishop to g4. And he's playing it pretty fast, which gives me an idea that uh, he might be familiar with the intricacies of the position. I can go f3, I can probably block it with the knight. If I go f3, I believe bishop will have to retreat back right, to f5. But uh, I think this is the line, actually. There is a tricky line in these positions uh, where black sacrifices few pawns somehow. Is it f3, bishop f5, g4? Hmm. Okay, let's think uh, what happens if we simply go knight to f3, queen takes d5, bishop goes to e2 to defend it, probably knight goes to c6 to attack my center, but then I can try going knight to c3. So that should be fun. Okay, I'll go knight to f3 because I don't want to get into theory of f3 and uh, go for complications which I'm not familiar with. I think bishop f5, c4, that's what the line goes there. Okay, the fact that he's thinking, I think is a good sign. Maybe we've surprised him a little bit, or he's just explaining all the different the theoretical lines that he knows, and uh, he's trying to decide which way to crush me, but we'll see what happens. Well, that's one of the biggest things I feel like about playing someone like and a strong international master or grandmaster, you have to 
somehow get into a decent position out of the opening. And so hopefully I've surprised them a little bit here and maybe we can, can take him out of his comfort zone. Ah, he goes knight f3. Okay, yeah. So this is a move. Usually what I do is play very aggressively. It'll be interesting to see how he responds. I don't think I'm going to change my strategy, so I'm going to go with what I'd normally play. Usually there's knight c3, and I'll bring the queen over here. It's not maybe the best way to play, but I think it's pretty tricky. Queen takes d5. Okay, now we are pinned. Knight on f3 is pinned, so I think it makes a lot of sense to simply defend it. And, okay, he just goes bishop e2. Interesting. So knight c6, just developing, I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think we just go here, swing the queen over, then we can castle right away, put the pressure on the d file, and either e6 or e5 to follow it up. Let's just do that. Again, I'm trying to save some time for later when we get to those critical moments, so I'm trying to play quickly here. I'm assuming that now he probably wants to go knight c6 to put the more put the pressure on the d4 pawn, wanting to maybe take on f3, bishop takes f3, and then go long castle. Uh, well, I mean, after they go, go long castle, excuse me, bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, and then takes on d4. So my d4 pawn is a little loose right now, but we still have few moves. So let's uh, try to make the best of it. Now, one move here that I can think of immediately is c4 what happens if we go c4 attacking the queen and potentially going d5 on the next move so queen will probably go to f5 or a5 let's see queen a5 check we can go bishop d2 but that does block the d file and defense towards the d4 pawn so i'm not sure if that is a good idea. Queen a5, bishop d2, maybe queen b6. But we can go d5 there actually. And if queen takes b2, bishop c3, attacking the queen, defending the rook. Okay, so queen a5 is not a problem. What about f5? Excuse me, um, c4 and queen f5. Then we can still go d5 actually. And if knight goes to b4, we have queen a4 check. So let's try that. I think most people play c4 or knight c3 here. Yeah, he does go c4. And I am going to just swing the queen to h5. I don't believe I need to really think about this too much. Let me just go straight over here. And usually what I like to do is if they castle and play h3, I'll just sack the bishop, open up the king, and try to... Either get my bishop on this diagonal, jump my knight to g4, or even sometimes h5, throw these pawns forward. It's not totally, like, I don't think it's stockfish approved, but it's very tricky. And this is a, 15-10 is still on the shorter side. It's not like a blitz game, but it's still relatively quick. So I think this is totally fine. And it's what I'm most comfortable with in these lines, so I'm just going to go with it. Black did go ahead in development already they have three minor pieces and the queen out while i only develop two of my pieces knight and the bishop however white has the center with the pawns your d4 and c4 pawns while black has no pawns in the center this can be double-edged sword can potentially become weakness on d4 for example especially after long castle so we will have to see how to deal with that maybe d5 right now i'm assuming black wants to counter that with the long castle what if we go queen to a4 after they go long castle maybe knight e5 but then we can take on a7 knight takes f3 Wow, that line gets very interesting. I also like actually going d5, long castle, and knight bd2. Knight bd2. What is black going to do there? Maybe knight e5 anyways? In the worst case, you can just go short castle there. Or knight takes e5 also trading. All right, I think I will try to bite the bullet here and go d5. I guess he's going to play 
maybe castles or knight c3. I don't know if d5 is a move here. Because I could just castle and it's pinned. Ah, he does play it right away. Interesting. So, okay. <clears throat> I guess one option is we castle. We pin, pin this pawn. Get the king to safety. I wonder if he plays a move like queen a4. What do I do? Because if we move the knight, we, we might lose the pawn here. Probably would have to try to play something aggressive, I would assume. I don't know if that's going to cut it. Takes... There's gonna, yeah, it's kind of wild. Uh, the other option is I just go here right away. Takes, takes, which pins the bishop. I really think I want a castle. Just not sure. Queen a4. All right, I'm going to have to think about this a little bit. Option number one, and maybe the only option, is knight e5. If he takes, I take. I'm threatening checkmate. Something like f3. I retreat. I don't love that I'm losing that pawn. So maybe, what if I do, okay, hold on. What if I just play rook d8 and don't castle? No, but then queen a4 is still pretty annoying, right? Because my knight is stuck. Hmm. Do I have to go here right away? Queen a4, then I could just block with this knight. Maybe I do need to go here first. Takes, takes. Does f4 cause me any problems? No, I could probably trade. I think that would be okay. So yeah, maybe I have to go here. Check, we block. I don't think I'm missing anything in that situation. If he castles... You could trade a whole bunch of stuff. I feel like that's decent for me. Yeah, okay, so maybe that's what we have to do. All right, let's go 95. Okay, we are attacking the knight. So he either has to move the knight away or go long castle, or maybe rook d8. But if just rook d8, I believe I'll have queen a4 pinning the knight. So I don't think that is any good. Most likely, long castle should be the move here. Believe. So on long castle, rook will be pinning my queen. So I cannot take on c6 immediately. So I either have to move the queen away. I'm assuming that's probably going to be a4 square. Or block the d file with knight bd2. I also like knight bd2 actually because it strengthens my defenses towards the f3 knight. So it's unlikely that he's going to have any tricks there. And it also blocks the d-file. So we are renewing the threat of capturing on c6. Interesting. He immediately goes knight to e5 without going castle. Okay, now we should have few options here. One option is probably taking on e5, but then queen takes e5, pinning my bishop on the e-file. Another option that I really like is queen a4 check. Okay, queen a4 check, let's consider that. Now, if bishop goes back to d7 to attack my queen, I think we should be fine just retreating the queen, let's say b3, renewing the threat on b7, and then we would also be threatening to move the knight away, attacking the queen here, for example. And uh, most importantly, black has no threats, so maybe even bishop f4 forcing them to take on f3. However, after queen a4 check, he can probably block with this knight, knight d7, and maintain the threat along this diagonal. Then if I take knight e5, queen takes e5. That actually I do not like. Maybe I can go knight bd2. Do we go knight bd2 immediately, or do we go queen a4 check first, knight d7, and then knight bd2? I think I like going knight bd2 immediately, making sure that my e2 bishop is protected if I need to move the knight away. Okay, he just defends the knight. All right. I mean, I'm looking if there's some ways to like do something fancy here, but he's not going to take with the bishop and allow that. He's going to take with the knight, obviously, and then there's just a re recapture. So I guess there's nothing fancy. I think I want a castle now. And the nice thing about now is on queen a4, I think I would just slide my king over to defend that. Maybe a6. So yeah, I'm thinking about castling. I don't have to castle. I could also, I don't know if e6 is a good move. Maybe just e6. 
try to get the bishop out and castle this way. I'm still fine with this because I have the pin. Yeah, feel pretty good about that. I don't really want to trade and open up his bishop. I think I would rather let him do the trading. So yeah, I think we're going to castle. Queen a4, king b8 seems safe enough. Uh, unless I'm missing something. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Now we could try trading queens there with queen e2. But I think even better is blocking it with bishop e3. Yeah, I think I would prefer to do bishop e3. Give up this pawn on b2. But then go short castle. And uh, white is way ahead in the development there. I have a bishop pair. Rook b1 is going to be a threat. And black is still undeveloped there. Bishop on f8. So I would definitely be okay with that. All right, long castle. So maybe we had to include queen a4 check to make sure he didn't have a long castle, actually. Could also simply castle right now. But castle will be giving up threat of moving the knight away as well because after castle you don't want to take on e5 bishop e2 will be the threat but we do want to go h3 actually after castle so let's let's calculate that e6 what if we go h3 there bishop takes f3 knight takes f3 he takes d5 hmm. what if we go queen a4 right now Attacking the a7 pawn. Knight f3, knight f3. A knight f3 actually would be good. He probably is just going to go king b8. Oh, you know what? Actually, I also like now h3. I just realized that h3 creates the threat of knight takes e5. And then if queen takes e5, we can take on g4. So immediately I cannot take on g4 because there is a pin on h5, but I'll be threatening to take on e5 and then take on g4. So what is black likely going to do with that? So h3 probably knight takes f3, knight takes f3 and then go e6, but then we can go short castle and threaten the bishop. So probably moves back and then we can move the knight. Yes, I think I like to do that. The only two moves that I could think that he would play would be queen a4 and castling i mean i guess if he wants to trade but that just seems weird putting yourself into a pin you can't really go knight f3 because the pawns get all messed up so yeah i think he's probably going to castle or go queen a4 plays anything else i'll be a little bit surprised oh h3 so he's not threatening it right now because of the pin, but is he planning on castling and then having that threat be there? Or is there some hidden idea of like taking? Ah, okay. He wants to take and then he's winning a, pawn, a piece here. Yes, because if he takes and I take back, he takes with the queen, which actually defends the knight and I'm just losing, losing a piece. So it is a threat. Okay. So maybe I have to trade or trade and retreat yeah, what if i just move the knight is that a is that a crazy move what's the idea well he can't take me anymore so that this is actually a pin again if he castles now i can sack i've got both knights over here seems decent although knight g5 maybe is a bit annoying and then the other knight comes in yeah maybe i don't want to do that so hmm what if, I mean, what if I just trade? Takes, takes. If I take here, he's got the bishop pair, which I don't love. I don't love giving up the bishop pair and the board's getting open. I don't think that makes sense. But takes, takes, I would probably have to retreat, but then I get forked. Actually, no. If I take, I don't have to retreat, right? Because it's a pin. Okay. So takes, takes, maybe just e6. Just e6, get the other bishop out, threaten here. And then he's probably going to castle. And then I have to make the decision at that point. Do I sack? Do I do something else like take and sack it this way to try to sneak in here? Okay. But regardless, I think taking probably makes the most sense. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and take. There are a few lines here that we probably want to consider. One would be knight takes f3 another one would be bishop takes f3 
Below the critical is probably taking on f3 with the knight. Knight takes f3. And then we do not have a threat for the moment there because we are still pinned on h5. So most likely after knight f3, knight f3, black is going to play e6, attacking our d5 pawn. I'm trying to go short castle there to renew the threat of taking on g4. I don't believe taking on h3 is that dangerous there. Or maybe it is actually. It takes, we take with the pawn, queen takes h3. A few things we can do there. One thing I see immediately is something like going queen d4 with the idea of going queen h4. That could be fun. Here, here goes the line. e6, short castle, bishop takes h3, pawn takes h3, queen takes h3. Threatening to simply take on d5, maybe bishop d6 and weaken my king or go for the attack. But I should have few moves there, which I'm hoping is going to help me to consolidate. I just noticed actually after queen takes h3, I may have knight going to g5. Okay, attacking the queen on h3 and this bishop on e2 will be controlling the g4 square. So for the moment, black is not going to have checks there. All right, I think we're going for that line. Let's for a second consider what happens if we take with the bishop on f3. It probably is gonna force trades. Queen takes f3, queen takes f3, knight takes f3. Oh, he actually also has a queen e5 check. So bishop f3, bishop f3, queen f3, queen e5 check. I don't think black is worse there. If they trade queens and then manage to trade off this d5 pawn, black is probably at least not worse. What about bishop takes f3? Bishop takes f3, knight takes f3. Short castle takes on d5, queen a4, bishop c5. That's also an option, but let's go for the critical. I think we already started with knight f3. That was my original idea, so I'm gonna stick with it. E5, eh, no, I'd rather, I think, have the pressure on this pawn. So, yeah, I think E6 is the move for sure. Now, ca yeah, he's going to castle. E6 castles. I could take it and then just move my queen maybe to F5. Doesn't seem totally out of the question. If he does something like bishop E3, I'm just going to try to take and w win a pawn, basically. Yeah, I have options. I have a lot of options, I think, after e6. So make sure there's no blunders. You could trade or we could sack the piece. He can't take me because of the... Yeah, I think that's got to be pretty good. Let's go e6. Now I'm expecting black to put the pressure on d5 pawn somehow and uh, get the development going also. So probably e6. Let's calculate what happens after short castle there. Short castle. Now, black probably has two ways to continue there. One and the most critical that I can see would be bishop takes h3. Another one would be e takes d5. Since bishop h3 is going to be the most likely to be played, I'm going to calculate taking on d5 first. So let's say short castle, if it takes there, I think I simply take, take, and even if I go bishop f4 there, I don't think black should have too many attacking prospects let's say bishop d6 and we go for example actually what do we play there maybe queen d4 okay i don't think that is something i'm concerned about there even if i just play queen d2 let's try short castle bishop takes h3 g takes h3 queen takes h3 knight goes to g5 queen most likely goes to h4 or f5 Queen f5, I'll have queen d3 trying to trade it, so that should be fine. Queen h4, maybe queen to d3 anyways, trying to bring queen closer to defending here. I think I like that because if bishop d6 and threatening the checkmate on h2, I can go queen h3, which should be defending everything. You can go h6 though to keep my knight away. That's actually uncomfortable. Knight takes f7. Bishop d6. 
Ah, but then I can even take knight d6 there and then go queen g3. Okay, I think I'm ready to go for it. So castle is what I'm thinking. Takes, I'm not take, sorry. Takes and queen f5 and then take next move. He might play something like queen a4 to get out of the pin. If I take, he comes down here. That doesn't look ideal for me, actually. Okay, maybe I should just start with the obvious. What if I just sack the bishop like I wanted to? Knight g5 is the really annoying move. Yeah, I can't do it. Can't do it like that. So I think if I'm going to sack, I'm going to do it this way and then jump in with the knight. Because then at least his knight is tied up defending temporarily. Now you can play bishop f4, but then we have bishop e e6. And it's getting kind of tricky. The knight could move. Then we take. That looks fine. Okay. He does castle. I think I want to take here because here's what I'm thinking. If I go back, or sorry, if I take and go, was it? Yeah, yeah. Let's say I take queen f5. He, he could probably just play queen a4. He gets out of the pin, and the bishops are going to eat me alive, I think, right? I don't know if I can get away with a6, but takes, takes. Bishop comes out. It just doesn't look like a good position to play. I don't think that's smart. I think we have to go for the p sack, take here, jump in with the knight. We at least have this pressure. He can go bishop f4, but then I do have bishop d6. And it's not that simple, I don't think, for white. Is it worth a piece? Hard to say, but it's the only thing that I really see. And I again, I want to try to keep the pressure up with staying ahead on the clock. This doesn't look work because of the knight chief. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I can a piece here. So, oh, he takes on d5. Interesting. Okay. Good thing about this is, in the worst case, we can take take and play knight h4 because we'll be threatening to take on g4 with the check here attacking the queen as well so let's say takes takes knight goes to h4 threatening to get rid of that knight on g4 with the check so i am thinking that he's probably gonna go after takes takes, queen takes h4, bishop takes g4 check. If king has to move on the side, then we can play bishop f4 and we are safe. Can black play f5 to defend the knight? So takes, knight takes, knight h4, f5, defending the knight. In the worst case, I can just get rid of that knight. There will be no more checkmate threats on h2. So I think I'll do that. I think... Yeah, because you can't move the knight anywhere. You just get checkmated, right? Oh, knight h4 actually takes check. Ooh, I didn't see that before. No, I'm still going to do it. I have to pre-move it and hope that he's going to get into time pressure because he's explaining everything to you guys. <laughs> you got to use this as my, uh, as a, not a handicap, but like I got to maybe try to put the pressure on with the clock. And I can also go bishop f4, which looks good takes on c4 you know queen a4 afterwards bishop d6 she takes d6 rook d6 takes there rook h6 okay that does look a little, little scary so i think i prefer to go knight h4 all right so we pre-move the recapture here is my thread if the knight moves now he could go to h4 because it blocks that and it also attacks the knight, in which case I would have to take. He takes me with check. I move over. And the game goes on. I'm going to try to bring the bishop to put pressure here. He does go for it. He does go for it. Okay. So, and I can't go here. He just takes and pins me. I have no other moves, right? This doesn't make sense. I'm, he's threatening his very serious fork. So I believe, yeah, only move is to take the knight. And try to get rid of this knight as fast as possible with the check. And then king b8, right? I don't want to give up a pawn for free. I don't want to block with the rook. Only move king b8. Yeah, I believe now king has to move on the side and then we can get the bishop out. All right, but uh, we've got to be a little careful here, actually. It may not be super straightforward. What I mean by that is... Like he's threatening bishop d6. Now go for the h2 attack. Go g3. Moves the queen back. 
and then this pawn is going to come too fast. Right? This is actually not easy. I think I will want to try trade queens as fast as I can. So, what if I actually take here? Here, g3, bishop takes g3, takes, takes, king here. And I don't think he has checks actually there, so let's try that. I may be playing with the fire here a little bit. But uh, let's see, takes, takes, h5, and try, and bishop f5. Okay, I think I like that. Okay, so three, four, five, three, six, seven. I have two pawns for the bishop at the moment, but he could take this. The issue with that, though, is it does allow me to go bishop d6 and threaten checkmate. Now he has bishop h3. Uh, I'm just wondering if I can throw these pawns forward here. So let's say takes bishop d6. What's he going to do? What's he going to play? Bishop e3? No, you have to stop checkmate. So bishop h3 first. Oh yeah, maybe h5 to stop queen g4. Okay. And then we try to push this pawn. So... He's at a minute and a half, so he's going to have to start making some quick decisions. So if I can keep it complicated, I think we threaten the checkmate. I oh, he could play f4, actually, but no, that doesn't seem very good. No, he's going to play bishop h3 for sure. He can also go bishop h3, which would block it, and then threaten queen g4. He was probably h5 to try to go g5 and then g4. So, see g3, bishop takes g3, pawn takes, queen takes, king h1. And we have two bishops covering both h6 square and h5 square, so I think we should be safe there. Rook d6 doesn't threaten anything, and then we want to go queen f3. Yes, I'm going to go for g3. Oh, g3. Okay, was not expecting that one. Wait, what? So if I just sack? He just wants me to sack all my bishops, huh? Oh, I for some reason I was thinking I don't even have a perpetual because the bishop. All right, what if I sack and go h5? If he takes me, then I would have a perpetual or maybe even more. So what would he play? h5, let's say queen f. No, I take with check, actually. It's a it's a serious threat. It's a serious... I got to do it. I got to do it. I may as well do it quickly to give myself the best chance here. Okay, h5. Very dangerous threat. He can't take me or I have at least a perpetual. At least. If he moves, can't go there. You could go here. Wow. Oh, I can also try to do this. The bishop's sitting there. The bishop is just sitting there. Wait, if I go h5, do I have a perpetual check? So, wait. Oh, bishop f5. He's going to play bishop. But then g6. All right, I got to do it. I got to do it. I don't see any moves for him. I'm going to move the bishop away, most likely to f5. I don't think queen g4, the queen h4 check accomplishes much because I'll get closer. If g6, then I'll try to play queen f3, giving up one bishop to trade off queens. Because I think if we trade off queens there, we should be, we should be winning. We should be winning uh, left with an extra piece at least. We're threatening now bishop f4, attacking the queen. Rook d6 is not scary because we got h6 square under control. So I think we can go bishop f4. Oh, but he has queen check. I missed that move actually. Queen h4 check. King g2, rook g6. Oof, that is not looking good. All right, he goes h5, which I think makes my job a little easy because now I don't have to be worrying about rook landing on h6. So I believe I can handle it with bishop f5. Could also go back 
actually. Check, and then king here. We rook d6 afterwards, bishop g2, rook g6, queen f3. That also looks very good, actually. Uh, bishop f5, though. g6, we can go queen f3. If he goes h4, then bishop h3. If queen takes f3, rook takes f3, takes on g5, rook takes f5, and we're up a piece. So that should be should be a win. All right, let's go for bishop f5. I mean, I might have to take the perpetual check here because I'm down two bishops. <laughs> Unless he finds a way to stop that. But you can't go queen or rook f3 because it's check. So... He could go here, but then g6. Ah, he could go here, g6, and then try to chase my queen. Yes, okay. So g6, I think, is the move. Maybe I should push the pawn, but no, that doesn't seem right. I think we have to attack the bishop, because if we make it leave, we get the perpetual. We actually, no, he could go here. Check, check, and block. It's not a perpetual. Oh, no, but then I have this, and I win the piece. Okay, so g6. Rook f3, check, rook h3, ooh, okay, hold up, what if I go check first, is there any, oh, because then he can't block with the rook, so what if I go check, he's going to go king g2, I go g6, but then I don't have the check, that's the problem, okay, so g6, bishop e4, f5 and just throw the pawns forward is there some other crazy move here check king g2 is the problem what do i do i don't i don't really know g6 i don't think it's good enough so g6 now bishop e4 i gotta play i gotta put the pressure on let's go g6 so right now i think we have most important squares covered here like h3 and g5, which would be, let's say, if he tries to keep checks, we have that covered too with the bishop. We're quite low on time. That's the one thing that concerns me here, actually. Yep. Okay, now I want to give that bishop if he wants to trade queens, queen f3. We also have an option of going queen d3, actually which looks very good. Ah, he can go h4. Then we want to go bishop h3. So for that reason, I'm going to go to f3. Queen d3, I was a little concerned about h4 move. If I take queen g3, h takes g3 with the check. King g2 then takes on f5. I think I should still be winning there after rook takes f5, but my king is somewhat exposed there. So with the... Uh, 20 seconds left on the clock. I do not want to be calculating those lines. Oh, queen f3. Ah, so he wants to just sack the piece back, go into the end game because he has the bishop. Uh-huh. And I don't think I have a choice because if I go check, he brings the queen over and he's fine. If I go h, I could go h4 actually. Takes check. King moves, then I take it. That's an interesting one. Or I just take, take, take. Uh, my pawns are all messed up, though. So does it make more sense to go h4 here? But let's say he just moves the bishop, though. No, we can't. Yeah, we got to take the bishop. We have to take the bishop while we have the opportunity. Yeah, we have to. So I'm going to do this and take the bishop. Seems like the only option. With an extra material and little time on the clock, I think it's the best practical decision to try simplify as soon as I can. Simplify would mean trading queens. Okay, he trades he trade queens and takes on f5. Okay, now we should be able to take here as well. Our king is not in that much of a dangerous position. So we have bishop or two pawns here, but both pawns does seem a little weak. They are isolated. If we can win this pawn, ah, ah. So now I'm in an end game down a piece. Not ideal, not ideal. We have two random pawns that aren't gonna be much use. 
we his king is okay his king is just kind of sitting there so maybe we can put some pressure on somehow but that's unlikely i could go c6 no check makes no sense i think i want to go here the idea is to somehow get some activity if he takes i can invade but he can't allow that so he's probably going to go bishop g5 or bishop f4 and I could defend this guy and then try to invade. Man. I don't think it makes sense to keep this pawn. What is this pawn going to do? He's just going to eventually just take it. So got to go for the active pieces somehow. This is at least tying down the rook. Yeah, let me go here. Let me go here. Do I will try to go bishop f4 next. Maybe rook c1. Putting the pressure on c7 pawn. Yeah, I'm not sure here how can black... Try to get active. Maybe rook e8. But I'll probably still go bishop f4. And if rook comes to e2, then I can bring my rook to c1. And uh, if I'm able to capture c7 pawn and keep the d5 pawn on the board, I'm willing to give both of my pawns for, for that. b and a2. Because I believe that d pawn is going to promote if I win the c7 pawn. So yeah, I think now it should be quite difficult here for black. Trying to invade those bishop f4. All right, so rook on the second is good. He might try to take this though, and I'm getting into some trouble here. Rook d7, if I go rook e2, this is just bad news, right? This is bad news. I guess we have to go rook d7. Oh, that's a good move, actually. Yeah, this is a big weakness, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, maybe I just... What if I do just go on the offensive? Let's just say I do it. Let's just say I do it. Take this. No, it's a fork. Take this. There's back, make, back rank mate problems, too. Not good. Not good. All right, I'm going to defend it. And I need to fix the back rank mate. So I'm thinking B6 and, and move the king out, or a, at least A5. Something to give the king an escape route. I think rook D7 is likely. Here, I may want to create an indirect threat there. Go rook c1. If black goes rook e2, seeking for activity of their own, I believe I can take rook c7 there. Rook takes c7, maybe rook takes f7, threatening to win the c7 rook there. If rook defends with the rook c2 there, I think we have a mate, back rank mate. So let's calculate it again. Rook goes to c1, rook e2, rook takes c7, rook takes c7, rook takes f7, attacking the rook on c7. And if black tries to defend it with rook c2, then we have a checkmate on the back rank because this bishop is pinning the rook. Rook c1, right. He might even want to take this. And then take this. What he might be doing. So I could go king c8 actually. I could go king c8. So king c8. Because here's the thing. If he takes this. This pin is going to crush me. It's going to crush me. So I think I need to avoid that. Also. Deals with the back rank mate. Because I know it doesn't. Because it's still checkmate. Man. I'm, I'm tempted to just move my pawn. Because I don't want to get checkmated. I, If I go. Like let's just say here. If he takes 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 i go here now then this pawn i have to worry about too man i really need to trade off as many pawns as i can though so does king c8 allow me to do that at least king c8 takes c6 take takes check king goes here because if i can trade off enough pawns we might be able to hold on for a draw actually yeah let me go king c8 this, this pin is super annoying we got to get out of that pin so I want to push the pawn to c6. Oh, d6. Oh, man. And next, my plan is simply take these loose pawns, one of them, I think, h5, and then bring my king closer to the center. As they say, endgame is about three things. Pass pawn, active king, and zugzwang. Zugzwang, I don't think will be necessary here since we have an extra material. Zugzwang mainly applies to equal endgames. 
but bringing the king closer should definitely be a priority. But if I go king g2 right now, he has rook e2 check and takes this pawn with the tempo. So I think I will want to take this pawn first, make sure that if rook leaves the eighth rank, I have rook h8 check, and then I'll try to bring my king closer. I mean, that's actually a mate. If I go here, check, rook d8, rook takes c7, king b8, rook d8 would be a checkmate. Yeah, I kind of expected that. I think we go c6 and just hope for the best. He might just push, but then at least I can... No, I can't even do that. I can't even do anything. Wow. I could go b6. I could go b6. The idea is my king gets away, maybe? Let's do it. Let's do it. But at least I don't have back rank mate. If he pushes, I could go c5 and try to hold on. And now I'm hoping to invade with my rook. Probably black will try to, yes, give the fling square. Okay, now I want to secure the second rank here. I believe second rank is what matters most in activating the black's position, let's say rookie two. And next I will try to bring the king closer to the center. He stops that. So I could go check and come behind. Ooh, can we win the pawn? Does check and coming behind win the pawn? No, because rook d2. Oh, but then I take and go c6. Hold up, hold up. There might be something here. There might be something here and here. Or here and here. Maybe this is better so he doesn't get to use his king. Aha, let's do it. I got to move faster. Okay, let's do it. I'm trying to get behind the pawn and try to win this guy. Because if I can win this pawn, it's maybe it's not that easy for him. I was also thinking maybe going rook back to h2. But um, that uh, takes away the, the defense from the d5 pawn. So for now, I prefer to keep that rook on h5 defending my d5 pawn. Yep. Makes sense. Now I should probably defend this guy. Rook f5. Could have also gone back, maybe bishop h2. Am I blundering something? I don't think so. Trying to take this guy. Okay. Now is the time, I believe, to bring the king closer. Because if rook takes d5, at the end, the c7 pawn will be hanging. So let's say rook takes d5, rook takes d5, rook takes c5. I take on c7. King moves side, I take on f7, and we have an extra piece. There. So those traits and simplifications is definitely in favor of the side that has extra material. Okay. Now, it's going to come at a cost, but maybe I should play a5 first. I don't know what to do. Yeah, let me try to save my a5 pawn if I can. Let me try to save it. Okay, let's bring the king closer. Go ahead and take this. He's gonna get this, obviously. I'll just slide over. Can't walk into that, it's too that bit dangerous. Here. He's got a threat here, so I have to watch out for that. Now we'll take, we can take on c7 and then take on b7 as well. Actually on f7, extra minor piece. We gotta be careful though. If both pawns get traded on the queen side, it is going to be much more difficult to win. Rook and bishop versus rook is a theoretical draw. Now there are a lot of positions which the, the winning side may still try, but uh, definitely do not want to trade off all the pawns. So let's see how to keep them on the board. You can try go back, bishop c1, b3, a4, captures rook b4, you can defend it with the 
Yes, so for that reason, I think I'm going to try go back and then go bishop d2, bishop c3. Man, if I can get rid of this pawn and trade rooks, it would be a draw. But the problem is he doesn't have to trade rooks. That's kind of the problem, right? Because this pawn is the wrong corner for the bishop. Like if this, these are the only pieces that are left, I, it would be a draw. Because it's the wrong corner. So that's something to keep in mind. Wait, but I could have just attack it, right? I could just attack it and go back. Make sure that black does not get any counterplay. What do I do, guys? My king is cut off. The bishop's too strong. If I go here and try to push, maybe that's my best chance. I think number one thing we are trying to do when we have the material advantage uh, and in general golden rule of technique which means converting converting the material advantage into a win is try to limit your opponent's counterplay as much as possible he's going to take it with check though man let me try to go to a3 like, if he attacks this, I'll go to a3, try to get tricky. No, he stops that. Of course he does. Uh, okay. I think four golden principles are try to limit opponent's counterplay as much as you can. Number two is do not hurry. Do not hurry usually means if you have a way to improve your position. That's what you want to do first before going for the comital decisions, which would be going for the trades, going for captures, changing the pump structure, and so on. It's not looking good. I could go here to keep the rook away from the pawn. Number three is, I believe, principle of two weaknesses. But that mainly applies to positions where material is more or less close to each other. Lost my time advantage, and we're down the piece. Yeah, he's going to keep these on for sure, and it's a question of can he win the... He's probably going to be able to do... Let me go here to stay away from the dark squares, I guess. And number four was correct exchanging. Exchanging pieces that are not needed for the, for the attack or for the conversion. Can't move that or it becomes a weakness. I'll try to keep his king out. Okay, now we'll try to bring the rook on e4 here. Try to trade it. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be able to win this. He's gonna block with the rook. Hmm. Yeah, this is a problem. I don't think I can even try anything at this point. If we're able to trade rooks, I believe now black will have no counterplay whatsoever. Already a3. I actually want to explain that move here. Idea of playing a3 was to not allow black to play a3 and weaken my c3 bishop, by the way. That's an important point here. Okay, on rook h4, I believe now we can try trading rooks okay we should simplify position by a lot if check we can now get closer to these pawns and try taking them one by one just trying yeah i'm just trying to keep the the pawns alive but it's like a go rook there but still just feels like it's not really going to matter. I could also try to bring my king up. We should be able to win the a4 pawn. If b5, then we can go rook e5. And again, try to force the rook trade or win the b5 pawn. Okay, now we take the pawn. Next phase of the conversion here would be trying to create a passer. 
So let's see how we want to do that. I believe maybe go b4 and bring the king back to b3 and push a4. Ooh, maybe he'll play b3. Let me go check. Take no, it's still not checkmate. Never mind. Never mind. There's no there. I was like, oh, there's a crazy checkmate. There's no checkmates. Oh man. All right. Um, I mean, I could try to checkmate if he moves the bishop away. No. Okay. It was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. <laughs> B4 right now does look a little suspicious because we are. Yeah, exactly. Now, if we were to move the bishop away, it's never too late to blunder. If we were to move the bishop away here, let's say bishop d4, b5 would be a checkmate. So, always double check. Never too late to blunder. At this point, it's it's only a matter of time, but I'll let him demonstrate the technique here. Basically, he's going to like start pushing and, and win another pawn, and I can't really do anything about it. Strike or rook e6 now, next with the idea of a5 and winning the b6 pawn as well. Yep. I wonder if I could stalemate somehow. Some sort of a stalemate trick. Oh. Nope. Nope. And keeping in mind, we're trying to win without giving any counterplay to black. Yeah, almost. But I have a place to move to. That's a problem. I could resign here. I'll, I'll let him play a few more moves just to demonstrate how to win this. But it's over, guys. It's over. Okay. How do we do this without allowing any count counterplay and stalemate tricks? Let's move it on c6. And let's go a6 check. Now get closer with the king. Or check. Okay, now we can win this, but we can also just promote. So I believe taking rook makes more sense. <laughs> it does uh, allow more possibilities of the stalemate, but black has at least two squares on a7 and a8 so all right very interesting game i'll be joining the call now with nelson to discuss the game together no no stalemate all right i'm gonna do it good game good game to zurub uh we're gonna go have a, a, a google meet call and discuss the game so if you want to see that it's going to be posted on his channel i'll put a link in the description uh, i felt like it was a pretty good game i feel like i put up a good fight um check the game review here real fast and then uh, yeah if you guys want to go check out the post game discussion make sure you go do that 89 82 and uh, you could see he was never really in danger right and so um i'm interested to hear what what he was thinking about during the game so anyway I'll see you guys over uh, on zurb's channel all right take care